dude she said she had bronchitis just to not hang out with me bro who dodges a date with a reason like that hey man don't worry bitches come and go but you know i stay we all know about the bright side of fame after all it's fed to us in a continuous 24-hour news cycle on every type of screen imaginable but for each new story that shines a light on all the positive aspects of celebrity there are two that have fallen through the cracks because they cast the industry in a less than favorable light these stories deal with the dark side of fame, and that's what this series is all about. In today's episode, we're taking a look at one of the biggest and most notorious names in the influencer industry, Jake Paul. Yeah, you're messing with the Jake Paulers, you're gonna get destroyed. Then boom. On the bright side of fame, with more than 20 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, 14 million followers on Instagram, and almost 4 million on Twitter, Jake Paul has become one of the most successful stars of his generation, whether it's in the world of viral content creation or even in the world of professional boxing. I'm taking this seriously. There's a long list of opponents that I want. You know, Conor McGregor, Dylan Dennis. I'm gonna knock them both out. This self-proclaimed everyday bro with a Disney Channel flow has been in the spotlight now for a large portion of his still young life. But not all press has been positive. In fact, more often than not, Jake has managed to leverage controversy in order to keep himself in the public eye. Because on the dark side of fame is a different story altogether. Offensive antics, FBI raids, charges of criminal trespassing, and unlawful assembly, illegitimate weddings, encouraging kids to abandon their education, and not to mention calling COVID-19 a hoax, are just a taste of Jake's darkest moments, and today I'm gonna tell you all about them. Let's go! Hey, what's poppin' guys? Your boy Marlon Palmer back at it again with a brand new episode of our series that takes a closer look at the darker corners of celebrity. Today's subject is none other than the one of the most popular influences around, Jake Paul. Jake's about to step back into the boxing ring again to face Ben Askren, so before we find out which way that match goes for him, I thought we'd take a look back at some of the most startling moments of his career. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at ThatDoomFly, let me know what you think, but let's get into the story. The first major accomplishment of Jake's career would also become a part of his first real controversy. After getting a start alongside big brother Logan Paul on the now defunct app called Vine in 2013, Jake was able to parlay an audience of over 5 million followers with over 2 billion views into a role on Disney Channel in a series called Bizarre Vark. I can never do what this guy does. The series actually revolved around the exact type of fame that Jake had so much experience with, social media celebrity. And his character Dirk more or less resembled his real life self. Jake landed on the series in 2015, but just two years later, he'd be given the boot. At first, his exit was suggested to be a mutual decision that allowed Jake to concentrate on other projects. But later on, Jake would reveal the truth, saying that what led to his firing was a local TV news segment that he had posted to his YouTube channel where KTLA5 visited his neighbors to interview his neighbors about his YouTube stunts. Needless to say, they were not pleased. It used to be a really nice, quiet street, and now we're just this, like, war zone. We're families here, and we're more than happy to have them live here if they're respectful of their neighbors, but they're not. By this point in his career, Jake was 20 years old and working where he lived with his Team 10 YouTube collective to film pranks and stunts that include the likes of starting a massive fire in his backyard, dirt bike tricks on the street, and building a homemade water slide for his pool. It's just the usual Yo, why are these neighbors tripping? He sends a little kid out to discuss the situation with a reporter. Okay, you got it, big okay. guy. Then runs inside. His neighbors would refer to their situation as a living hell. And after Jake leaked his own address online, things got even worse. Fans showed up in droves and the residents of Beverly Grove had officially had enough. They met with police and city officials to discuss a clash action lawsuit and the company that owned Jake's house sued him for $2.5 million. Apparently that was enough for Disney to decide that Jake wasn't worth the hassle, releasing him from his contract so that both parties could move on. Around that same time, Jake also had a falling out with his girlfriend, Alyssa Violet, kicking her out of the Team 10 house after accusing her of cheating on him. Of course, Alyssa had a different view on things, saying that it was actually Jake that hooked up with a string of girls in front of her face and used her feelings for him to make money by selling shirts that shipped their relationship. After Jake moved on from both Alyssa and his Disney series, he entered a series of business ventures that would prove to be just as controversial. As someone who didn't finish his education before becoming wildly rich and successful, Jake often likes to tell his young, impressionable audience to follow in his footsteps. The best example of this is probably his widely mocked diss track titled My Teachers. But Jake wasn't content with just dissing the educational system. He decided to redesign it his own damn self by creating two of his own educational programs that were meant to instruct followers on how to build a career as an influencer. 
The first one being called Edfluence. Fifty-seven dollar course, which I thought was kind of cool, kind of nice, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know if anything else would pass. Um, for like younger kids. This program was launched in 2018 and it was structured as a series of videos that fans could unlock for just $7 that would give them a roadmap to success. Except the problem was paying that $7 didn't unlock the program in its entirety. It only unlocked a handful of videos with basic tips like have a phone and if you like makeup, create makeup videos. Man, I can see why this crap only costs $7. If you wanted all the videos, you had to pay $57. Perhaps even more disingenuous was Jake's promise that by joining the program, each fan would have an opportunity to join Team 100, an expanding version of his original influencer collective, and something that never came to pass for anyone. We were so naive. We were like little children, man. We didn't know shit. The website for influence no longer exists, so people who paid for its services only a couple years ago can no longer access it. Then in February of 2020, Jake launched a new educational subscription-based platform called Financial Freedom Movement. It was basically the same exact premise as his original idea, only you pay $20 to create an account. I, I don't get it. They tell us to go to college, get a job, retire at 65. How's that working out for us? Hello girl, hello darling. What's your name and what's your number, beg your pardon? Beyond his scams, Jake has also gotten heat for his numerous controversial comments and inappropriate YouTube videos many of which deal with hypersexualization and violent content. For example, in January of 2018, Jake uploaded a video called I Lost My Virginity, which dealt more with acrobatics in the snow than it did the kind in the bedroom. That was actually oh, pretty dope. Dope, 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 dope. Down, up, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Woo! In quintessential clickbait fashion, that video originally had a thumbnail with Jake and his then girlfriend, Erica Costell, posing semi-nude. YouTube then age-restricted the video and Jake eventually changed the thumbnail before deleting the vlog altogether. He's also challenged the ideas of the conventional social norms when stating things like, anxiety is created by you. Yeah, he's... He's diagnosing his audience too. After this tweet upset a lot of people, Jake responded by saying that he himself deals with anxiety and he simply wants to spread more awareness about mental illness. He's also gotten into hot water for his use of the N-word in a freestyle clip that surfaced in January of 2018. Baba Bowie. <laughs> That clip only got minor play online at the time because his brother Logan had posted a video about Japan's suicide force only days prior, which meant that social outrage was primarily fixated on his older brother Logan. Lesson here, say the n-word when something bigger is happening and you should be just fine. Then in May of 2019, Jake threw a massive house party that would see him getting accused of drugging a group of eight girls who would later wind up half naked, unable to walk or talk, and shuttled to a nearby hospital by the local fire department. Oh, and did I mention that he asked all these young women to sign an NDA at the door? Apparently that's a thing that happened, though I have to admit the reporting is split. The local fire department posted about the event on Instagram, more or less confirming these facts. But that post would later be deleted and the LAPD would tell the Daily Mail that they never received any reports about people being drugged at Jake's home. Regardless, Jake's track record with women is a mixed bag at best because another focal point of his controversies are his fake marriages. Yeah, as in plural fake marriages. His first fake wedding involved his ex Erica, but that stunt would pale in comparison to the social media event that was his wedding to Tana Mojo. What do you think when you saw each other? Ew. I was Damn. like, yo, let me smash right now. Like, he knew. Sorry. From the relationship's inception to the wedding to the breakup, these two documented it all and made themselves a killing of around 3.2 million in the process. But this marriage was never legally binding and Tana has described their wedding night as hell. Even though this is ridiculous, we're treating this like a real thing. Then in May of last year, Jake and his friends found themselves in more hot water when they were charged with trespassing in Arizona after a video began circulating of Jake at the Scottsdale Fashion Square shopping mall where looting and vandalism was occurring. Video of the YouTube star and his team members at the Scottsdale Fashion Square was posted to Instagram by Andrew Blue, who claims to be Logan's videographer. Jake claims that he was in the area to peacefully protest and was simply filming what was happening to show his audience what was going on. But the thing is, this isn't the first time that Jake has pretended like he was trying to be helpful. Back in 2019, he drove to Texas saying that he was gonna rescue victims of Hurricane Harvey, but he never did any such thing. 
it. So when Jake tried to play it being helpful once again, the police called him on it by charging him with two misdemeanors. But the thing is, these charges were eventually dropped to make way for federal charges, which leads us to our next controversy, the time that Jake Paul's home was raided by the FBI. On August 5th, the FBI conducted a search of Jake's Calabasas mansion, and while details behind their investigation remain a mystery, a SWAT team was called in and several guns were taken from the property. An FBI source would later reveal to TMZ that the raids were connected with Jake's arrest in Arizona, but they refused to specify what it is the FBI were looking for, and any possible charges stemming from this search remain unknown. Of course, having his house raided wasn't going to stop Jake from throwing a massive party in the midst of a COVID worldwide pandemic. In July of 2020, he was celebrating a music video shoot when social media clips of party goers walking around without masks and swinging from heavy machinery began making the rounds. This even got the mayor of Calabasas, Alicia Wentrop, to speak about the incident. She told insiders she was outraged and that the city of Calabasas will be enforcing a zero tolerance policy for large gatherings that defy local public health orders. But Paul didn't really believe he did anything wrong. In fact, he more or less doubled down on his behavior during an interview with the Daily Beast when he told them ahead of his fight with Nate Robinson that he believed COVID-19 was a hoax. It's time for us to open up. Obviously, it's a controversial subject, but it's time for our nation to open up and uh, go back to normal. You really think that? Um, yeah, 100%. This is, the, this is the most detrimental thing to our society. Uh, COVID case deaths are at less than 1%. Um, and I think, I think the disease is a hoax. Jake would later say that the quote was taken out of context, but uh, I don't know, man. That doesn't sound all that out of context to me. Look, despite the fact that Jake has met with his fair share of backlash for his behavior, the truth is it's done absolutely nothing to hurt his popularity. He's never even experienced a massive subscriber loss despite his many, many controversies. In fact, it's often just the opposite. His behavior tends to have people gravitating towards him more and more. So what does that say about Jake? And perhaps even more importantly, what does that say about those of you who look up to him? Like with most YouTubers, notoriety is always Jake's endgame, which has a bunch of his critics calling for his fans to stop paying attention to him. But truthfully, that's never going to happen. After all, he's still in the top 200 YouTubers on the platform, and the metrics suggest it's unlikely that he'll slow down anytime soon. So what did you guys think of Jake Paul's brush with the dark side of fame? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow our series on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on what you'd like to see next. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.